One of the golden rules on this show has been and always will be is do not coach to please your enemies. And there were two glaring and wonderful examples of that going on last Saturday night. Uh, one of them was Ryan Day against Notre Dame. I know that's bent a lot of you sideways. And then Dan Landing and what he said before, during, and after the Oregon throttling of Colorado has rubbed a lot of you the wrong way. I famously have never particularly loved the way that Dabo Swinney went about motivating his team at Clemson. But if you'll notice, and you've watched the show for a while, or if you have, you've noticed, I always thought he did a great job. And that doesn't sound like it makes much sense, right? How can you both not like something someone does, but also think they're doing a great job? Well, it doesn't matter how I feel about how Dabo runs his program as long as he's getting maximum efficiency and results out of his program. I'm not talking about this year, talking about over the long run. It was obvious, regardless of whether it rubbed me the wrong way or not, it was obvious at the level Clemson was playing that Dabo was doing something right. So who cares what I think about it? Well, I say the same thing about these folks who are upset about Dan Lanning saying what he said to his team and Ryan Day for saying what he said after the game the other night when he sort of quasi-targeted Lou Holtz. And I told you I thought that was just bottled up emotion that he's been carrying for a little while. Well, I'll get to Ryan Day in a second, but I wanted to circle back. Sometimes I clap when I'm really excited on the show. I want to circle back for just a second on this. We don't do this very often. By Tuesday, I have long since moved on from last week. But I thought about this yesterday, and the more I thought about it, the more I said, dude, you left a lot of meat on the bone the other night. So let's pick it clean here. I think Dan Lanning was really introduced to a large chunk of the college football public last Saturday. Now, if you're watching this show, chances are you're a diehard fan. So if you're watching this show, you already knew who Dan Lanning was. You had a fully formed opinion of him, and that's wonderful because that's how we roll. Not everyone rolls like us. Some people check in on Saturdays, and they don't follow the sports Sunday through Friday. These are people who would celebrate the offseason. These are people who don't mind being booked in a fall wedding. They're out there. I promise you, they're out there maybe closer to your social circle than you want to admit. Those folks did not know a whole heck of a lot about Dan Lanning going into Saturday. And then, for about a three- or four-hour window, Dan Lanning was blasted all over Twitter, all over Instagram, all over TikTok, all over national television. He was in the game of the week against Colorado. Whether you want to call it that or not, it was. And all of a sudden, the first impression folks had of Dan Lanning was this dude that looked like a borderline psychopath going crazy, talking about how they're out for one thing, we're out for another thing, let's do the talking with our pads. Dude looked like Kirby Smart West, because that's kind of what he was. By the way, that's the last dude he coached under before he went and got his own job out at Oregon. Well, anyway, the game went the way it went. And I told you Sunday night, I don't know what Dan Lanning's going to say this week, but man, I know he's got a Monday press conference coming up, and I hope, and I hope, and I hope that he does not bend a knee to these people who are going to ask for apologies and ask him if he regrets anything. Because it was obvious, based on the level his team played at, he pressed all the right buttons. Well, we have acquired footage clear from Eugene, Oregon, of said press conference, and we're going to give five stars to Dan Lanning for this one. Because, friends, this is how you put on a clinic after putting on a clinic. Here's what I say. We're playing to win the game, right? And you saw a 15-second clip. Uh, from a window view outside the house of what happens in the locker room, right? I, I know our locker room. I'm in the house 100% of the time. I know how our players felt um, going into that game. And I know what it takes to motivate our players. That's my job, to motivate our players, right? He has a job. I have a job, too, um, to get out there and to perform on the field. But inside that house, they felt a certain way. They felt a certain way about a group stomping on the O. They felt a certain way uh, about guys talking to them in the pregame. And I'm proud of those guys because what they decided to do is talk with their pads, Right? They didn't want to do anything extra afterwards. They want to talk with their pads, and they did that on Saturday. I'm also um, grateful and, and can clearly acknowledge that the attention that we got this Saturday in large part was due to, uh, due to Dion and what he's doing to college football. And if anybody can't see what he's done for college football and how he's bringing excitement to college football, you're crazy. Credit Dion, check. Don't bend an inch, check. Defend your players, defend your position, check. And have your creative media people run circles around everyone else by out Colorado in Colorado after you body bagged Colorado. It was a clinic on all fronts from the University of Oregon this past weekend and bleeding into this week. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I know a lot of you don't peruse social media a lot. 
uh, go borrow your nephew's account, log in, and just go watch the borderline short film that Oregon put out. It gives you a sense. If you just watched the broadcast, you wouldn't pick up on it. It gives you a sense of what pregame's like. I'm on the field every week. I see this stuff every week. I hear the talking every week. I know what it's like. Uh, frankly, I'm surprised that there are not knockdown, drag out brawls every week in college football. Y- you watch. You watch a team rack up three or four personal fouls in a game, and you call them undisciplined. And I'm sitting here thinking, I cannot believe, based on what it sounds like on this field right now, every one of these games does not devolve into just an outright street fight. It's crazy. So I had to the discipline that it takes to play at the level Oregon played at. And then afterwards, and you've, you've run up the score on someone, afterwards your, your creative services department, it turns out, captured all the pregame talk. <laughs> And it captured everything Dan Lanning's talking about. And I think they should enter that thing in some festivals. That was how, that was how good a cinematic presentation that was. But let me, um, let me try and put this in terms that 98% of the audience will understand. I know most of you did not play high-level college football. I know most of you didn't coach it. Most of you didn't go on to play pro. Most of you didn't go on to coach pro. I share that with you. I have it in common with you. I do have the good fortune of seeing this stuff up close every week. The, I'm telling you, the average person could not possibly comprehend how high a level this stuff is being played at, how high a level the intensity is, how off the charts, like animalistic the aggression is, the aggression that it takes to compete at this level you don't reach that in a nine to five in a cubicle. You'd never need to reach that. I hope you don't reach that in your living room in, in Susquehanna on a Saturday. You didn't think I knew where that was, did you, Jesse? What happens, though, is that's when you see it. You see it from your couch. And, and it's like you're watching Dan Lanning go crazy, and it's exactly as he put it. You're seeing that kind of from the street view. You're seeing inside the window and the dude's yelling in his house. And you're saying, well, that's uncalled for. Little do you know, the kid just sprayed spaghetti sauce all over the walls after he warned him not to. There's a good reason he's in there yelling, is my point. You're not in the house. You don't know. You have, you have not the slightest clue. Well, you also didn't know what was going on in this game. And you also, from your couch, cannot possibly fathom what it takes to compete at the highest levels of the sport. Otherwise, you'll get run over. It's like you're sitting there watching Predator and the dude's standing on the bridge slicing his chest open with a machete and you're saying, well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, from the living room in Little Rock, Arkansas, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Just like in the living room watching Dan Landy go off pregame, it may occur to you that, oh, that's a little over the top. That seems a little performative. That's Dan Lanning, dude. And after the Ohio State game the other night, that's Ryan Day. If anything, what happened is both of those dudes, to a certain extent, sort of allowed the curtain to be peeled open or alternate point of view based on the fact that we have cameras in every square inch of a stadium now with microphones you got to see some stuff that happens pretty frequently that you just aren't normally privy to you don't normally get to see that it happens a lot like what what you saw is not out of the norm i promise you it's not out of the norm did you see lanning's players did you did you see how well within the norm, his attitude seemed for them. And if not all the time, certainly that was within the theme of what the attitude had been like around that program that week. Um, So I'm, I'm watching it and I appreciate it. And I had no problem with either one of them. But my point is, even if I did personally not really jibe with it, I don't care. Because they got the performances that they need to out of their team. That's their job. It's like Landing just said, that's their job. Also with Ryan Day, I'm so interested after this whole thing where, and I did not expect to say this, Ryan Day comments on Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz responds to Ryan Day. I should note uh, Lou Holtz brought it up before Ryan Day ever commented on him. I told you I don't really think it's a Lou Holtz thing. I think it's a a collective outside noise thing with Ryan Day. Um, I'm really interested to see how his team responds because I saw them play the other night. They win a game that was defensive, a slugfest in nature. That has not been their M.O., under Ryan Day, they've had elite quarterback play most of the time under him, so they've been able to run it up on teams. Well, they didn't run it up the other night. They still won. It's a testament to Ohio State. Now, you saw what he said. I'm sure by now you've seen what he said the other night and called out a lot of people who have questioned his team. He was just it, it, the adrenaline's flowing, man. It's live TV. You never get to say, hey, hold on, can we do that again? You don't get to say that. 
It, we're live, pal, as Jim Ross once said. Um, so what I want to see is how his team responds. You know, because a lot of the criticism that Ryan Day has incurred, fair or not, and I, I lean not uh, far more often than I do fair with him, it's really on players to execute. you got to put them in the right position. you got to develop them and coach them up. But it's on players to execute. And if I'm in that locker room, I watch that dude, and I want to run through a brick wall for him. But also, I think to myself, wow, man, these people, they trash him because I don't do my job. How about I do my job? And I think that's what you'll see. I, candidly, it's what I've expected from Ohio State the whole year. We'll see where the JP poll has them a little bit later. But my point is, when you see these dudes – and they seem a little bit over the top, it's over the top to you based on where you're viewing it at that particular moment. It's not really over the top in their environment. Also, a lot of times you think you're seeing chapter one of something. You're really seeing chapter eight. That was a lot, and I mean a lot, a metric ton of BS in a lot of cases that led up to Ryan Day feeling the way he felt. That wasn't a Lou Holtz thing. That wasn't a week of the game thing. You're crazy if you think that. Otherwise, he'd be like that every week. Anytime someone ran their mouth, he'd be like that every week. Uh, Landing, same way. You'd just see that every week if that was the case. I just happen to think there was good reason for both to behave the way they did. I got no problem with it. I know a lot of folks who I respect in some cases did have a problem with it. I don't care because I don't even care if I have a problem with it. As long as their teams perform the way they need to, that is all that matters. And then there's a period. There's no yeah, but. That's all that matters.